welcome back to my channel! Today's video... So today's video is going to be a binge eating q and I'm sure a lot of you uh, remember I actually just recently uploaded a binge eating video. However, that video more focused on what to do after binging. That video was just more geared towards how to take yourself out of it. This video, on the other hand, is going to be more geared towards how I have stopped binge eating. So a lot of you know, if you follow me on Instagram, that I just recently hit 50 days binge free. I'm going to be completely honest, I don't think I'm completely over binge eating. It's something I still struggle with every day, thinking about binge eating. But I do think that I am going in the right direction. I am very, very, very happy to share that this is my first ever sponsored video. You guys know I am very particular with what I promote, which is why I have never done a sponsorship before. But when BetterHelp reached out, I knew that uh, they were a company that I would be very happy and very proud to work with. For those of you who don't know, BetterHelp is a online and affordable counseling service. So basically, through the service, uh, you have access to hundreds of licensed, uh, accredited, and available counselors and therapists. The great thing about BetterHelp, in my opinion, is that you can actually access the service uh, at home so I know a lot of you myself included have a bit of anxiety about talking about your problems one-on-one -on -one in a therapy setting so the great thing about BetterHelp is it's actually online I feel like it's just less anxiety inducing knowing that if you are having trouble talking about it or um, you need a second you can easily turn off the webcam you can easily mute the microphone BetterHelp counselors are trained in a wide range of mental health issues including eating disorders which is why I thought it would be especially beneficial to talk about it in this video when we're talking about binge eating I mentioned many times in my videos that there's absolutely Absolutely nothing wrong with seeking medical and professional help if you think that you need it. You should never feel ashamed to reach out for help. If you are interested in looking more into the service, you can go to www.betterhelp.com slash Jordan Shrinks. Jordan Shrinks. Okay, so back into the video, back into discussing binge eating. Before I get into your questions, I do want to quickly talk about binge eating and like what it is and what it entails because one of the most commonly asked questions I actually get is how do you personally define binge or how do you like what even is binge eating am I overeating or am I binge eating by the way how fucked are my nails it's really funny because this is just naturally how I've ripped them off and they're like opposites <laughs> oh my god it's a new trend <laughs> all right so like I said the most common question I often get is how do you define binge eating disorder or how do you define your binges so I just have my laptop here for a quick sec because I'm going to tell you the official definition and it is the consumption of large quantities of food in a short period of time typically as part of an eating disorder the problem I have with this definition is that it is very broad and it kind of leaves out a lot of different aspects that a lot of different people kind of experience while binge eating whether that's like the emotional side of binge eating disorder or the guilt. I also think it's really important to talk about lack of uh, self-control. Like, it's not a decision, you know what I mean? For a lot of us who binge eat, it's never, it's you never want to binge eat. It's always like you're put in that, you're just put in that position where you feel like you can't control it. So to me, I've always identified my binges as like the complete loss of self-control. I do not consider a couple hundred calories over my daily caloric allowance to be a binge. I consider that to be like not a good day or a day I messed up, but that's not a binge. Like a binge is in itself very different from overconsumption because when you're binging, you're not there. And this is so hard to explain for, to people. <gasps> Alexa just talked and it scared the fuck out of me. For people who don't experience binge eating or don't experience the sensation of like not having control when it comes to food, it's very hard to explain to them. And I'm gonna have a really hard time explaining it even in this video, but it's basically like you cannot stop. Once I get in my mind that I'm gonna binge eat, like it's gonna happen. Like I cannot, even though I will tell myself, this will ruin your progress, this will make you feel bad physically and mentally, this is going to do more harm than good, once it's in my brain, like, it is not going away. And even if I can push it off to the next day, or the next day, or the next day, it just builds up until I binge eat. They're just very different things. Like, if I'm at a friend's house and we split a bag of chips, and that bag of chips puts me, like, a thousand calories over uh, my daily caloric allowance, but then I go home and sleep and don't eat anything else, that is just me overconsumption. But if I go to my friend's house, split that bag of chips, and then once I go home, say, I've already messed it up, fuck it, and I just start eating everything, that is a binge. That is a mindset I easily fall into, and I know a lot of us easily fall into, is once we mess up a little, we're just like, bring on the fucking food. But a lot of you asked if I had like a calorie threshold or like a certain amount of calories that I would identify a binge. Not really, uh, depending on the person, your binges will vary in terms of like caloric size, It'll, it, it depends on a lot, it depends on how much your stomach can hold. 
um, what you're eating, like you know what I mean? But for me, I've had binges that have been like as low as like 4,000 calories up into 10,000 easily. All right, so now onto how I have stayed binge free for 50 days. Unfortunately, I don't have like the golden answer. Like I don't have an answer that's 100% gonna work because for me, it just takes a lot of trial and error and it just, it's putting myself in the mindset that I'm not gonna binge, which I know is easier said than done. Like I could tell you just get in the mindset not to binge, but I know that doesn't fucking work. I unfortunately don't have the answer everyone is looking for. However, I have changed some things that I wanted to share because I think they have contributed to me going binge free for 50 days. So here are, I think I have five. Yeah, these are five things that have really helped me regulate my binge eating. So the number one thing, and I think this might be the most important thing that I have done, um, is I actually changed my eating schedule. So when I first started losing weight up until like 50-ish days ago, I would eat right when I wake up. Yeah, so I would wake up and I would eat breakfast. And I kind of recognized that when I started eating in the morning, it triggered, like it triggered something. It just made me hungry all day. Like the second I eat anything, that's when my hunger hormones are like, oh yeah, bitch, we're ready to eat. And just the whole, like the rest of the day, I'm thinking about fucking food. What I decided to do was I was like, why don't I eat later in the day? So instead of eating at 8, 7.30, um, I now eat at 12. So I go the entire morning without eating anything. And I find that that has helped me a lot. And the reason I think that's helped me a lot is because it has narrowed my eating window so i have less time to eat the same amount of calories but when you have less time to eat the same amount it feels like you're eating more like it's a mind thing uh and obviously the first couple days of not eating until 12 sucked but now it's just second nature now it's like you my body's just used to not eating until 12. and something that kind of happened as a result of me changing my eating window is i now have a lot more calories at night so me and a lot of binge eaters we like snacking at night so now that i have those calories available it's just easier for me to stay on track because let's say at night i eat a thousand calories of i don't know pop chips like usually that would be enough to trigger me to keep eating more because i'd be like i fucked up i already ate too much but now like it falls within my caloric goal so i'm like okay Time for bed. So the second tip um, I have is to eat slower and I'm sure you guys have heard this before but it is very true. My problem is I will get food in front of me and I will eat it in 0.4 seconds. I've been like this my whole life. Try to taste your food more, chew it more, and swallow it because a big problem we have is we eat so fast that our brain cannot catch up with our stomach or, or our stomach cannot catch up with our brain because we think we're still hungry because we don't feel full because the food is still making its way down. So yeah, that's something I've been trying to do is just eat slower, try to enjoy food more instead of eating it in fucking five seconds and then crying because I want more. So the third thing that I have uh, been trying to do is eating more in a controlled environment. And what I mean by that is like controlled portion sizes, controlled like just where you are. Something I find that I fall into is I will take food and I will watch a show. And when I do that, I'm not really understanding or I'm not uh aware of how much i'm eating because i'm watching tv so it's like i'm in a distracted environment so what i've started doing is i will portion everything i'm like you are not bringing that bag of chips in there unless you are allowed to eat the whole thing unless it fits in your calories like my favorite thing to do is to eat and watch youtube and i know a lot of you like that too or eat and watch netflix um but i found that when i was watching tv there was like a disconnect and i'd be like oh i'm still watching this i'm gonna go get more snacks i'm gonna do this so really try to portion your food before you put yourself in an environment where you're gonna kind of like lose awareness of what's going on in terms of your eating patterns i will only allow myself the portion i'm like you are sitting and eating this if you eat this in the first five minutes of this movie it don't matter bitch you're not getting up and getting more food it's like when you go to the movies and you get popcorn and you literally eat the popcorn during the previews and then you have no food for the movies. So then you go and get more food, or at least that's what I do. All right, so the fourth thing I've done, and this is something I've talked about on my channel before as well, and that is integrate more junk food into my everyday diet. So as someone who's coming from a very restrictive past, and what I mean by that is someone who very easily labeled foods good and bad. I would only eat good foods. I would only eat low calorie foods. And that was like how I kind of operated when I was losing weight and that's kind of the mindset I've had to kind of escape from but as someone who is like I said coming from a restrictive past it was so fucking beneficial for me to integrate junk food into my diet every day what I mean by this is I will eat cake every day and cake is usually like a taboo a bad food but since I've been able to put it into my calories and put it into my macros it is 
I've taken the power away from food. So I no longer label cake as a bad food because I know I can eat it every day. And when I know I can eat it, I'm less likely to binge on it. So if there is a trigger food for you, if it's bread, if it's cookies, if it's whatever, try to integrate that into your daily calories. Because the second you realize you can eat it and it's not a bad food, you will not binge on it. Because you wanna binge on stuff, it's like that saying, you want what you can't have. And when I know I can't have cookies, I'm gonna eat them in excess, like the whole pack. And then the final thing um, that I would recommend to help stop binge eating is to make sure you are not surrounding yourself with binge eaters. Okay, to me, binge eating is very isolating. And what I mean by that is I will not binge around anyone. And I think that is because all my friends have regular eating habits. So like, I don't wanna binge in front of someone who's gonna be like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you eating so much? So it's always been a very, do it yourself thing like in my room alone. I feel like if I was put in the environment with other bingers, with other people who are like, fuck it, that would be very dangerous for me because we would all feed off each other. We would all enable each other. So if you live with someone, if you are friends with someone and when you get together, all you do is binge eat, you need to separate yourself from that environment. Okay, so those five things are basically what I've changed and those are why I think I have gone binge free for so long. Um, but now I'm gonna get into some of your commonly asked questions just because you guys have general questions about binge eating and I'm gonna try and power through them. I know this video is already way too fucking long. Okay, so the first commonly asked question um, that I got was do I have any trigger foods personally? I do not have trigger foods, I have trigger environments. And what I mean by that is if I eat too much of anything, I often get the, like the fuck it mode and I just throw everything to shit. If I'm in a bakery and I'm looking at all the selection and I'm too overwhelmed and I can't pick one thing, that is a trigger environment because I'm gonna fucking get all of it. What tools or self-talk keep you from binging? Like I said, once it's in my mind that I'm gonna binge, it's basically gonna happen. But if I'm trying to prolong it or I'm trying to, you know, still trying to push it off, one of the best things that I have found um, that helps me is that I go for walks. I get out of the house. Being in the house is dangerous. All I do is I walk from my bed to the kitchen, from my bed to the kitchen. But if I'm out walking, I'm like, think about something else. Look at the scenery. Do not think about food. Sometimes it works. Like sometimes I'm like, nice. I walk until 9 p.m. and now I wanna go to bed. And sometimes I walk to the bakery. Do you tell anyone about your binge eating? Not usually. Um, like I said, that's the thing about binge eating, it's very isolating, it's very much, I do it on my own. I do tell people sometimes, but like, it's not something I'm like, dying to tell people, like, I just binge ate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm not proud. Um, what do you eat when you binge? I almost always binge on sweets. I'm not really someone to like, get a pizza and eat a whole pizza. It's, I'm a sweets person, cupcakes, oh my god, chocolate. Um, is binge eating emotional eating? I think it can be for a lot of people. I think a lot of people do have eating disorders linked to past trauma. For me, I do not think it's emotional. I think it's very much linked to my history of restriction and it's just my body thinking it's starving. And that brings me to a very linked question and that is, have you read B Brain Over Binge? Uh, yes, I have read it. I really liked it. It's really what helped me pinpoint restriction as the cause of my binge eating and I definitely recommend it. If you're interested to learn more about, you know, the science side of binge eating. When did you start binge eating? I started after I lost all my weight. Um, I didn't binge while losing weight, I didn't binge before losing weight. It is very much a result of weight loss and restriction. Well everyone, those are the questions that you guys asked. So I really hope that it was helpful to some of you. I know binge eating is a very complex topic. I know it's very um, discouraging, everything like that. And I wish there was a concrete solution for all of us, but unfortunately there isn't. You just have to find what works for you, what can push you forward. But other than that, thank you so, 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 so much for watching this video. Uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And again, thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video, and definitely check it out if you guys are interested in getting online counseling services. Bye! 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 Fuck your Bible,